Have you ever had a stud break off in a block? No, I'm sure it's a terrible thing to happen. Yeah. If this stud breaks off in this case, we got problems. What's up everybody, thanks for tuning in. In today's episode, we are rebuilding and upgrading the 50cc engine on my Honda Z50R from 1999. This bike had been sitting abandoned in the woods since it was almost new, and the engine is very stuck. We're going from a 50 to a 108 big bore with parts from tboltusa.com. I've heard great things about this setup. It should be awesome as long as the engine case and transmission is salvageable. At the end of today's video, we are going to be drawing a winner for our Tillotson 212 giveaway, so be sure to stick around to the end for that. Enjoy. Man, uh, I didn't hardly get anything out of this thing. So no, no oil came out? No. I mean, could have a scored crankshaft, you know, seized up. Yep. You know, seized rod. Yep. But! Doesn't matter. Because tboltusa.com sent us everything we should need for this swap. There's a lot going on here. We're basically using the case of the engine, the ignition and charging system, and the transmission, and that's it. Everything else is brand new, and it's some really trick stuff. What we have in front of us are all the parts we should need to turn this 50 into a 108 big bore including this V2 racing head. I've heard great things about this setup. It should be a real powerhouse. So if you wanna check out these parts for yourself, you can find them at links in the description of this video. Let's start tearing this thing down. I think the difference in carburetor size alone should be enough to tell you that this thing is gonna perform night and day. 50, 108. Mm. I mean, it's just, it's a big screen. Is there, is there something missing or is this it? Not much filtration here, buddy. Good to know. The first thing we had to do was separate the old head from the jug in case. <laughs> yeah, we just made that noise for 10 seconds straight cuz Figured out why the engine stuck. Well, well, this could be one reason we we hadn't even tried rotating it yet um, since I'm gonna unbolt this one right here and If I rotate this engine and the jug goes Then that's the whole problem right there. So let's uh, take this loose Oh, that's a good idea. So you're just gonna take that loose and then rotate the engine and yep. or try to. Not looking good, bud. Yeah, there might be something else going on here. Oh my, but this thing's pretty tight. Hammer. Cause uh, we're New not jug. using it. New jug. And just as a heads up to anyone out there building an engine of any size or type, it's usually not a good idea to have all your fresh new parts right uh, in the line of fire for dust and crud to fall on them. You usually want to take your parts out one at a time as you need them so you don't mix up hardware. But uh, we're professionals. We are semi-professional race car drivers and amateur tattoo artists, so we do it this way. That's the wheel that broke in my CT70. That caused the, uh, yeah. Yeah. In fact, when I pulled it out of the engine, it was about, it was about that diameter. Dang. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, look at that. I'm getting some movement. Hey. charging system and stuff does not sound good. Yeah, I know. Yeah. 
So, the engine is free. The piston is not. That is super bad, dude. Um, dude, we gotta cut the rod. No. Oh. Man, I had a bright idea where we just split the case. Yeah. And have the piston still stuck in this thing, but these yeah, they are. studs. I, I'm we sure you can. We might be able can, to take the studs out. Might be able to take them out, but I wasn't planning on it. Have you ever had a stud break off in a block? No, I'm sure it's a terrible thing to happen. Yeah. If this stud breaks off in this case, we got problems. Yeah. So this is a huge no-no, but we're doing it because this thing's pretty much garbage. I think I just reached bottom dead center and yes I did. So I still need, oh, is it really? Oh yes! A win! Think we can save that jug man? If we big bore it, actually if we bored the snot out of it, might be able to put an oversized piston in it. I don't know where, where we'd find one, but hey, that'll make a nice keychain, dude. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. All right, Ooh. I'm gonna order a new stator. <laughs> that looks bad. Might want to get a flywheel too. Okay. That one's pretty bad. This looks like it'll fit, yep, in multiple places. So I just took a punch and made some marks so we know exactly how that clutch arm goes back on. It looks like it pretty much lines up with you know, this. Right off the bat, as soon as we split this case, we could tell this was no ordinary overhead valve Honda clone build. There's a lot going on in these. Yes, there is. But as long as you take a lot of photos, and shoot, even take some video footage, you'll probably be okay. You know, maybe we ought to uh, YouTube this. I don't know what I'm doing. We got these four bolts that we can take off too. I wonder if this whole thing comes off in the assembly rather than these. Nice. What is that? This is the clutch. Oh, that's the clutch. Yes, we have some uh, supposedly two clutch discs in here. So if I were to remove this snap ring right here and start this assembly, there's actually going to be some rollers that are going to fall out too. And I don't feel like dealing with that. So I'm going to say, this is good, right? Yeah. All right. And there's a special tool you're supposed to have to remove that nut That nut in there. Yes. But you did it with the screwdriver. I used it with a special tool, man. A punch. It was a special tool involved, man. Yeah. Yeah. Punch. Look at all that garbage. Yeah, we're going to have to spray that sucker out, man. I just want to point out guys that the uh, correct thing to do would be to remove dismantle and clean thoroughly the whole engine don't do what we're gonna be doing right now so do as we say not what we do yeah in order to stick with our video schedule we kinda have to skip a couple of steps here so hope you understand pretty vital steps I might add but we're gonna we're gonna do our best to keep keep it clean and uh, you know just just roll with it. Absolutely. The right thing to do: pressure wash your engine before taking it apart that all the parts when you have it apart and uh, then you can inspect every part and put it back together. We're just busting the case loose and throwing the crankshaft in. We don't even know that if, if the thing's gonna gonna run. 
Uh, but it should because we're replacing all the major. The rotating assembly. The all transmission the major, is the yeah. major question. Mark. Um, well, yeah, the transmission is the major question, but I'm I'm looking at it and it seems like all the uh, pieces pots uh, look good. So the outside of the engine case is still dirty, but all the mating surfaces and the insides are clean enough for testing purposes only. They're pretty clean. So we are ready to install new parts, starting with the new crankshaft and rod. It's a good idea to lubricate everything pretty good. Ooh. You sure this is assembly lube? It looks like red Loctite. Oh yeah. Boy, wouldn't that be something if someone pulled a fast one? Put red Loctite in this thing. We'd be messed up, dude. Yeah. Getting them bearings lubricated up real good. And I'm gonna set this. Put, put, put. And it's put, not a two stroke, put, man. Put, put. It's a hit and miss. Because <laughs> no. <laughs> sometimes I get it and sometimes I don't. Leaving anything out. I'm just doing this for assembly. It's not going well, man. So now it's time to put the piston in, but first we've got to install the rings. First up is the oil ring. Put this little waffle ring in first. Now keep keep in mind all of these openings need to be offset from each other. Right now the waffle ring is that way so I'm going to put the oil ring like there and then the other oil ring there. The gap. That's what I meant. Keep in mind these, this is very delicate work and it's got to be clean too. that one. Notice I don't have the gloves on on this one so I can feel these rings. All right let's see if these rings are marked. Oh well they're both R's but this one's kind of rounded whereas this one's flat. So if I'm not mistaken the sharp edge one goes on the bottom and the round one goes up top but I'm gonna google it and just make sure. I did some research and just to let y'all know, my research shows that the letters that are on the rings are always up. If you install them incorrectly, it can cause it to pull the oil up into the combustion chamber, causing it to burn oil and we don't want that. So installing the rings, gotta be careful. The rings are usually sharp enough to uh, cut you. Now it says R on both of these rings. It's not like an A, B, C or whatever. Uh, but I do notice that the top ring is actually rounded in shape on the ceiling surface on the outside. Mm -hmm. And the uh, bottom ring looks perfectly square, but apparently they're, they're ramped. So... All right, um, you know, I gotta do some research to figure out which way this piston goes. Intake is on top, exhaust is on the bottom. Bingo. Bingo. All right, dude. Man, it's so, man, this piston is way bigger than uh, the old one. The yeah. old one. It's awesome. Yes, it is. I mean, we are over doubling the displacement of this engine right now. That O-ring's in place, but none of these others seem to take a O-ring. So I need to, uh, just gonna lube this thing up real good. Oh yeah. And I know the chain's gotta go in, but I figured I could start these. Wish we clean this engine, man. Yeah, I wish you'd let me clean it. That's not how it went down. <laughs> I'm just gonna push it in and I'm gonna pull it out. 
and check for scratches. There's a little snap ring there that goes, what do you even call that? The backside of the camshaft bearing. I would call this the front side of the camshaft bearing. Oh right, because the cam goes in that way. Yeah. We are setting valve lash to three thousandths intake, five thousandths exhaust. We're going to check it again once we warm it up and yeah break it in break it in thank you got some really cool looking valve covers man i'm gonna say it again we should have cleaned that darn case <laughs> uh have you ever heard the term it'll be fine yeah we can clean it after we get it all together We took a few minutes to clean up the engine case and it's looking way better. Not perfect, but presentable now. We're not full of shame. Well, maybe a little bit. We should have done it in the first place. Ike's filling it up with oil so we can spin it over. And the factory charging system and ignition system here is looking really rough. We have a stray wire just floating around. We're gonna try to kick it over and see if we have spark but we are not hopeful. No. So it's been a couple of days since we've been in here. T-Bolt USA sent us all the parts that we need to hear this thing fire up. We got a new charging coil, stator, you know, flywheel, all that stuff. We have a new CDI box, wiring harness, kill switch, coil, and a cool T-Bolt USA side cover. Also, I noticed we got some seals too, so uh, man, let's get this stuff on and hear this thing fire up. Sounds good. I hope this thing comes right off. All right. All right, dude. Um, what's cool is it comes with the whole back piece. So we are gonna have to lay this bike over since it's full of oil. Yeah. Because we filled it up. And we're gonna have to take that side cover off. We need a big, huge seal. Did this one come with the seal? Got spark. Got spark. I heard it. It snapped. Awesome. Yep. All right, let's get wired up the rest of the way. So now we have spark. So we're gonna skip ahead to the best part. It running. This is the first time I've stood over it, man. It feels like a real bike. It's funny, it reminds me more of a dirt bike than a Z50, kind of sitting here. So we got front brakes, rear brakes, got a fuel tank, because this one is wet, it needs to dry for a couple of days, and then we can do our magic fuel tank seal job like we did on that one. So uh, are we ready to yeah, man. do it? Wow, it's got compression button. behind this thing. Does the kill switch work? I don't know. It does. Try 
not down. much with no airflow and right right being a brand new engine basically man that thing sounds awesome yeah sounds so mean yeah so i think next time we're gonna get the fuel tank sealed up uh we are i'm gonna change the oil because uh, there was still a lot of sludge in there we couldn't get out might want to change the oil now actually right um and yeah i think we can do some hot laps maybe put put it up against your bike put it up against some other mini bikes we have this could be a very strong contender to take the lap record for uh, two-wheeled vehicles, man. It sounds really mean. It sounds pretty nasty. It sounds way better than mine. I mean, it's just an RPM engine, whereas yours is basically stock. You know? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, got to thank tboltusa.com for all of uh, the parts that we use today, like the exhaust, uh, all of the engine parts, and some other, uh, some other odds and ends. Be sure to check them out at links in the description of this video. Can't wait to ride this Z50R, man. Um, kind of a bummer. This is our first time taking one apart, and it seems like we didn't get something right. Hey, it could not even be our fault. I mean, this was not a runner when we started. There could be something wrong with it. Yeah, the engine was seized up. The engine was seized, yeah. So, for all we know, uh, we might have done our job just fine, and uh, it was something else. Uh, kind of a bummer that we can't take it for a ride today, but hey. That's all right. So leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed. Subscribe to Cars and Cameras to catch the first ride of this 99 Z50R. Facebook and Instagram at Cars and Cameras Reviews. And if you want to help support us and our future builds and help us expand our uh, projects and our headquarters here, head over to our website, cars-cameras.com. Pick up one of our t-shirts, one of our stickers, one of our hats. It's all super high quality stuff. Um, Oh yeah, check my buddy Isaac out here at Isaac It'll Be Fine for some behind the scenes and car content. And uh, thanks again for watching, guys. We'll catch you next time. All right, it is time to choose a winner for the first ever Cars and Cameras giveaway. We are giving away a Tillotson 212 with a Stage 1 Performance Kit from GoPowerSports.com. Ike here has all of the names of everyone who entered in the hat, and we have to say, you guys... Uh, really blew us away with all of your orders. Taylor here, we're at Taylor's house. He has been doing all the order fulfillment for us. He's been very busy the last few weeks. I have been. Yeah. Really, really busy. <laughs> sorry, buddy. So no, thank you sorry. again for no, everyone who good. ordered. <laughs> so Ike here is going to choose one of the names out of the hat, and that's going to be the winner for the first ever Cars and Cameras giveaway. All right, before I pick the name, I'm just going to pick out a few, I don't know, Honorable mentions. Honorable mentions. Um, thank you, Matthew, Nicholas, and Scott. All right. Thank you guys for entering. So here we go. All right, y'all tell me if, I, if it's just uh, one. I think you got two. You got to drop them with some. Dalen Dorn. Congratulations. You just won a Tillotson 212. Yes. Awesome. Stage one kit. Absolutely. So we will be in touch. And if you didn't win this time, we have some bigger and better giveaways in store uh, for the upcoming months. So yeah. be sure to subscribe. Stay tuned for all those. But yeah, thank you again for everyone who entered this giveaway. Honorable mentions. Chris, David, Anthony, Adrian. What do you think, Taylor? <laughs> Here, just name all There's some a names, reason man. why he's the order fulfillment just, guy. Just name all some names. Uh, First names only. Jason, Clint, Terry, John. You won, John. Yay. Anthony, Crystal, Chris, Michael, Dan.
But all jokes aside, Dale and Doran, you are the winner of the first ever Cars and Cameras giveaway. Congratulations. You have won a Tillotson 212 with a Stage 1 performance kit from GoPowerSports.com. Thank you again to everyone who entered. Uh, we appreciate all of the orders. Uh, it has been huge for us. I hope you all are enjoying our merchandise. And if you didn't win this time, that's okay, because we have uh, bigger and better things in store. We're talking to Go Power Sports and seeing what we can whip up for another giveaway before the end of the year. So thank you again, everybody, and thank you for watching this video. Uh, catch you next time.